see all of you this morning. Amen. Um, I'm going to do a sermon, do a sermon on healing. Because I just went through a healing. And during that time, I've prayed for numerous of you. Um, you've texted me and asked me to pray for you. Um, Lillian, Lillian? Lillian, Leah's. She got her mom to text me and ask me to pray for her because she was sick. So we prayed for her, my wife and I, and she slept 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And Leah says, she slept 12 hours and I got six. Praise God. <laughs> because she wasn't sleeping. She was sick, coughing, hacking, and wasn't sleeping at all. So I believe in the hand of God mm -hmm. to touch and heal instantly. And sometimes it doesn't need stuff. But we're going to touch on all that. But I want to read you a story first. Um, in 1993, the lead author and church leader John Wimber found he had inoperable cancer and underwent radiation treatments. Cancer went into remission. In living with uncertainty, he writes about going without miraculous feeling for himself, even though he had seen others dramatically healed by God, he relates this account. I was speaking in South Africa at a large conference. A friend, John Leclerc, was with me. And we were asked to go to the home of a lady of the church. She was dressed beautifully, but was very immaculate. Or I don't know how to say that. Um, lost a lot of weight. <laughs> Weighing only 85 pounds. Emaciated? Thanks. <laughs> She had been sent home from the hospital to die. Her body was full of cancer. Her only hope of survival was divine intervention. We prayed for her, but not with great fervency. John had confidence that she would be healed. I felt nothing. That night she woke up with a vibrant, tingling feeling throughout her body. For the next four hours her body was full of intense heat. She tried to call out to her husband in the next room, but couldn't raise her voice loud enough for him to hear. Alone and frightened, she crawled into the bathroom, her body racked with pain. At the time, she thought, oh my God, my body is coming apart and I'm dying. Without knowing it, she eliminated from her body a number of large tumors. Finally exhausted from the night's events, she fell back to sleep. She didn't know if she'd wake up. But half an hour later, she woke up incredibly refreshed. Later, her husband woke up to smell freshly brewed coffee. I love that smell. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what are you doing, he asked. Astonished to see his wife on her feet preparing breakfast. She replied with sudden understanding. God has healed me. Two days later, she reported to a doctor who gave her a clean bill of health. They couldn't find a cancer in her body. God had completely delivered her of all of it. Without much energy to pray on our part, and without any desperation or faith on her part, the Lord choose, or chose to heal this woman's cancer-infested body through divine means. That's God. And that is sometimes how He does it. And I've seen many times the intervention of the hand of God healing people by His divine ways. I was preaching in the First Nations Reserve Church, and an older gentleman, must have been about 75 years old, came up, and he had water coming out of his eyes all the time, nonstop. And he came up for healing. He had a healing lineup. And he wanted to be healed. So I said, are you saved? He said, I'm Roman Catholic. I said, are you saved? <laughs> have you asked Christ Jesus into your life? And do you know him as your personal Savior? And do you have a relationship, not with Mary, not with your priest, but with Jesus? And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, will you say the sinner's prayer with me? Do you know what that means? He goes, yes. So we said this in his prayer together, and I told him 
As we say this sinner's prayer, because this is what God told me to tell him, God's going to heal you. As soon as you say, Jesus, come into my life, you're going to be healed. And I was going out on the limb, you would say. But that's what God told me to say, so I did. And as he said, Lord Jesus, come into my life, God miraculously, divinely healed his eyes. Both of them. Dried them right up. He said, that's the first time I've had dry eyes in years. In years. So now I was the one that had wet eyes. <laughs> because I held them and we started to cry together. <clears throat> Wonderful hand of God. Mm. And that's one of many of divine interventions that God's allowed me to pray for people and see Him move miraculously in people's lives. And it comes by faith. And faith comes by hearing the Word of God. But you don't just put your faith on the Word of God. You've got to move with action on the Word of God. You've got to put some action into your faith. Amen? To see God move. Such as these two men did. They went to an old lady's house. They put their faith in action. They prayed. Lay hands on the lady and pray. Not knowing if she was healed. Amen. So part of our healing is to believe and trust God. Amen. And exercise our faith. And in James 5, 13-15. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is anyone merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The prayer of faith. I like that. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because nothing happens without faith. That's why it's so hard when you're in a religious church, you don't see much happen. You see the up and downs and the up, left and rights and you see all those things and the smelly stuff and, and uh, all the other stuff you see in a religious church, but you don't see the prayers of the saints or the prayer of faith or a lineups for healing or praying for people in a, like we do when we have prayer before we preach and we begin to pray for people. So I believe I was divinely healed in the hospital by the prayer of faith from the saints of God. I told my wife, there's no other explanation. I should not be alive. In fact, my wife was preparing her heart for my death. She was preparing herself. She said, I thought you were going to die. When you go into the hospital, 2% oxygen in your body, you should already be half dead. Because the low oxygen count is 80 that's when they begin to worry, when you have 80 oxygen count. That's low. So they begin to worry. I have 2%. I should have been dead. But God didn't want me to die. Praise the Lord. He says, you can't go yet, Dean, because you have a whole church full of people that need you. Amen. 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 And uh, actually, your thoughts of me in this church and preaching and all of you folks kind of gave me hope. And encourage me to struggle to go through it. Amen? Amen. Sometimes I just sit there and think about this church and the people of the church. And tears that pull up my eyes. And then I would just begin to thank God. For all that He does. Amen? Amen. Amen. I put my eyeballs. See, Christians can face illness in various degrees, but there is one.
Jesus Christ has the answer to every need a person has. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus has the answer to every need. Every need. Whether small, whether big, whether middle, every need. Amen. Lost your keys, you can pray, mm -hmm. and God has an answer for you. He can show you where those keys are. Amen? Amen. Amen. He has every need for the spirit, for the soul, and the body. That scripture in James says that we need to sing praises to God. Why? Because it's good for the spirit. Anoint him with oil and name of and the prayers of faith. But it says up there, is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Let him sing to the Lord. Because it's good for the spirit. God loves that because he begins to move and encourage your spirit and strengthen you. So I can say this maybe, if you're going and having a bad day or you get up and you're miserable, don't take it out on your husband, don't take it out on your wife, don't take it out on the kids. Lift up the name of Jesus and begin to worship God and praise God and maybe that miserable spirit will dissipate. Amen. And there'll be fresh coffee. In the kitchen. <laughs> Amen. Instead of no coffee. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we are cooking here <laughs> See, the matter of healing can sometimes be very complicated. <clears throat> Amen? But through Jesus, we can always, always obtain the victory. Satan can cause sickness. How many know that? Mm -hmm. Just read the book of Job. Or I say the book of Job. Job. <laughs> because the Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't want you to live victorious in Christ. He wants to steal your faith. He wants to destroy your faith. And he wants to kill your faith. So he'll send sickness. He'll send diseases. He'll send a, a, a depressed spirit upon you. He'll send oppression upon you. He'll send all kinds of things upon you to try to steal all those things. But I say when those things come, rebuke him. The Lord rebuke you, Satan. I refuse to accept this depression. I refuse to accept this oppression. I refuse to accept this spirit I have. And I'm going to do more than that, Satan. I'm going to worship God in your face. In your face, Satan. Praise His holy name. Amen. Amen? Amen. And tell him where to go. Amen. Resist the devil and he shall what? Flee. Flee from you. He has got no choice. Praise His name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. you know, sometimes God has a loving purpose in your sickness. Mm -hmm. Wrap that around your mind. Sometimes when you're sick and God allows you to be sick, there's a loving kindness amongst that sickness. Let me explain. It could be for us to feel His loving presence more in our lives. God might want to bring us closer. Draw me close to you. That's what He wants to do sometimes. Because who do we call upon when we're sick? A uh, doctor. Doctor, doctor. Or do we call Dr. Jesus first? And then the doctors. Yes. Thank God for doctors. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the understanding they have of diseases. I have the greatest doctors, <coughs> greatest nurses. I got nothing but praise for the doctors and nurses in the hospitals that I was in, Chilliwack, and uh, Abbotsford, and here. Tremendous people. Really tremendous love. Their jobs, cared for people. Uh, brilliant doctor. I had a brilliant doctor. I don't know what nationality she was, but she was really good. Amen. So thank God for that. But God puts all those doctors in place mm -hmm. to help you. Just when I had my kidney operation, I had the best doctor in the kidney field, Dr. Starko. 
I had the best kidney operation in eight years. The very best, is what he told me. I said, because I have the best physician. He goes, thank you. I said, I'm not talking about you. I said, I'm talking about Jesus. He goes, oh, okay. I said, but you're good too. <laughs> because God gave you the knowledge to do what you're doing. Yeah. Amen? So we have to trust and rely upon God. For the first seven or eight days being in the hospital, I wasn't even coherent enough to even know what's going on or what they were doing to my body or what they were giving me. And they're talking to me, okay, I'm just going, uh-huh, 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 I don't know what you're saying, but okay, I don't even know what you mean. What does that word mean? Oh, it doesn't matter, just do it. So I just told them, do whatever you need to do to make me healthy, I don't care. Don't even have to ask me, just do it. You know, and uh, I'm just so thankful for the healing power of God. Amen. Amen. Maybe sometime God allows us to be sick to keep our faith active. Did you know sometimes you lose your faith? It becomes dormant because you don't exercise it. Oh, you still believe in Christ. You still believe you're a Christian. But your faith becomes dormant. You don't believe for others anymore because you never talk to people about Christ. You don't believe for your, your finances anymore because nothing's come through since you've been praying. So you go, the heck with that. I'm not praying for that anymore because God doesn't hear me because nothing happens. Well, I got a song for you. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. Till the answer comes. Why? Because it helps your faith. It increases your faith. It increases your trust in God. It separates you from doubt and unbelief and keeps you on the track of faith and trust. Mm -hmm. So you got to keep praying. You can't say God hasn't heard because God heard, has heard all of your prayers. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says that your prayers go directly into the ears of God. As soon as you utter your prayer, it goes right to heaven, right directly into His ears. The Bible says there's a sweet-smelling Savior into His nostrils. <laughs> The Bible needs to go as far as to say that even before you finish uttering your prayer, God has already moved on your behalf. So remember that when your faith takes a little nosedive. Amen. And it does to all of us. All of us, including me. It takes a nosedive. But say, no, 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 I'm not going to believe that because your word says that even before I finished uttering my prayer, you've already moved on my behalf, Lord. Amen. And that's what I'm going to believe. And I'm going to wait on the answer. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Quit being a Pop-Tart generation. <laughs> Have some patience and believe in God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Because what we need to know is that sometimes God wants to purify us. In our sickness. I was sitting there talking to the Lord about my actions towards people, my words towards people. And He began to deal with me about the things I say, the actions I take, how I conduct myself. And I had to repent. I said, oh God, I'm so sorry. I have not represented your love, your grace, your mercy, your patience. I have not had long suffering with people. Change me and help me. Because God begins to purify you. Begins to cleanse you from your own idiosyncrasies that come from the world. The world has no patience. The world has no mercy. They have no grace. They're not thankful. They're uncompassionate. My daughter was stuck in Abbotsford last night because the roads couldn't get out. So we're trying to get our room, giving our credit card number, to places we phone. No, we can't help you. We told them she's stranded. We told them she's in her car, in a parking lot, needing a room. They didn't care. No compassion whatsoever. None. All they wanted was money. 
So we finally did find one. Oh yeah, we can do that. We can help you out and stuff. Just do this, this and that. And very friendly and very compassionate. And got a room. The world has no compassion for nobody. Mm -hmm. All they care about is themselves. Not everybody, but there are very few that are Christ-like and are not Christians. <laughs> very few. Very far in between. Amen. Hallelujah. So, we must know when we go through, we have to believe that your sickness, and when you're in your sickness, Christ is there. Ready, willing, able to help you through. Whether your heart's sick, whether your mind is sick, whether your body is sick, God's ready and able. All He's waiting for you. He's just waiting for you to pray. And say, Lord, help me. I'm going goofy. Help me. I need some answers. Help me. I'm sick. Help. This is my favorite four-letter word. Help! <laughs> Amen. He's there to cover you with His presence while you're going through it. Malachi 4 to 2. Amen. But unto you that fear my name, there's the key, shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. And so you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Now we read that and go, well that's weird. You shall grow up as a cow? Of a stall? What does that mean? You that fear my name, those who live looking unto the appearing of Jesus Christ. You cannot live the Christian life if you're not looking for the resurrection power of Christ in the appearing of the Lord. Otherwise, you're not living. You're living for nothing. I live for Christ. Paul said, for me to die is gain. And that's where our hearts should be. For me to die is gain. I wait for the appearing, looking unto the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the way He wants us to live. And you can only live that way if you fear the Lord. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from Nicodemus' understanding. So to depart from your sin is to fear the Lord and have some understanding that He's going to pull us through and make us ready for the resurrection. Amen. That's why sometimes He puts us through things. Because He's putting us through the Kill, I guess I could say. Anybody done pottery here? Made some pottery? Well, I used to take my mom to pottery when uh, I was young. And I would stay sometimes and watch her make a cup on the kill. And then I'd go, oh, that's pretty ugly. You know? <laughs> and, uh, and then she would put it in the kiln. And the kiln would take all the rough spots off and make it nice and smooth. And then it would come out like a smooth, beautiful cup. And then she would paint it. That's what God does to you. He takes all the rough edges out of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And yeah. makes you smooth. It takes that piece of coal and makes a diamond. Mm -hmm. Now I'm talking the lady's language. <laughs> Amen. It takes all the roughness out of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Son of Righteousness, talking about Jesus, who is our promised hope, with healing in His wings. I love this. Somebody told me this in the hospital on the phone I was talking to. My brother. He says, you know, Jesus has healing in His wings. And He wants to cover you with those wings. I brought tears to my eyes when He said that to me. Picture Jesus coming to you when you're sick, taking his wings, the sheriffs, and covering you with himself. Just covering all of your being with him, with his presence. 
That's what this means. Healing with His wings. God will cover you with His presence when we call upon Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Deals with the grace and spirit which quickens, awakens, enlightens, and invigorates healing. It purifies us and refines every soul who is sick, held captive, to believe in Him. And by doing so, you say, Lord, I believe you can heal me. I believe I'm going to be healed. I believe you can help me with the hurts and the pains of the future and the past. I believe you can erase these from my heart. I believe these things, Lord. And then when you go to God and you say those things to God, God slowly comes by and covers you with His wings and heals you. Heals your body. Heals that hurt and that pain that you've been hanging on to forever. Takes it away from you. Brings a peace and a joy into your life. An amazing thing to be under the umbrella of the hand of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Embracing His love. Embracing His wings from heaven so He can diffuse all the attacks of Satan mm -hmm. on your life. What can Satan do when Christ has covered you? Mm -hmm. Greater is He that is in me than in this world. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me daily. There's nothing He can do when you allow Christ to cover you with Himself. Absolutely nothing. All He can come by and just try to attack and hit that wall of God and go boing, 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 and bounce off your spirit because you believe and you trust in God to bring healing in your mind, in your body, and in your spirit. Amen. That's where it lies. Yes. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Now this last one, we're all wondering, what does this grow up as calves of the stall mean? Well, this is talking about when God has healed you, covered you, you've trusted and believed Him, you become full of health, full of life, full of spirit, and you become satisfied and happy. And that's what a calf is like when he's newborn, begins to eat. And the more he eats, the more he becomes healthy. The more healthy he gets, the more lively he gets. And the more lively he gets, the more his spirit grows. Now he doesn't need to hang on to mama no more. He's running all over the place because he's satisfied and he's happy. Mm -hmm. And that's the way we should be when God has healed us. Amen. Amen. Lastly, I want to talk about healed by the power of God's word. Read you another story. In the Pentecostal Evangel Church leader, George O. Wood, he writes this. Have you ever heard a healing take place or seen one take place? He goes, I have. I listened to an audio tape of Dwayne Miller teaching his Sunday school class from the text of Psalms 103 on January 17, 1993. Dwayne permanently retired from pastoring three years earlier because of a virus which penetrated the malign sheath around the nerves in his vocal cords and reducing his speech to a raspy whisper. Teaching his class that day with a special microphone resting on his lips, he reaffirmed his belief in divine healing and that miracles had not ended with the book of Acts, like a lot of people believe. Well, that was for those days, not for these days. Well, you better get the wrong Bible you're reading, get the right one, <laughs> and begin to read that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Listening to the tape at times, you can barely understand his weekly spoken wheezy words of faith. A miracle happened at verse 4 when he said, 
I have had, and you have had in times past, pit experiences. How many felt you've been in the pit? Sometimes. Amen? Well, what's the Bible said? He's taking you out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and set your feet upon the rock. Thank God for that. On the word pit, his life changed. The word was as clear as a bell. In contrast to the imperfect enunciation of the preceding word past, he paused. He was startled. And he began again, paused, and was startled again and stopped. He said a few more words, all in a normal, clear tone. Stopped again. The class erupted with shouts of joy, astonishment, and sounds of weeping. God completely healed him as he was declaring the truth out of the Word of God in his song. There is power in God's Word. You can be healed by the power of God's Word. You can be reading Scripture and you've been thinking maybe of the past and you've been crying. And all of a sudden you read a portion of Scripture that strikes home. And then God heals you. Totally heals you. And you feel that peace. And joy comes. Or you can be sick and read a Scripture and God begins to heal you. Or anything in life. You begin to read Scripture and Scripture heals you. Because who is this Scripture? This Bible is Jesus. Amen. He wrote it. This is the Word of God. The power of God. Written by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Which means by the hand of God. Mm -hmm. So when you read Scripture, you're reading the very words of God and implementing them into your life with trust and belief in God, building your faith, and it heals you. It's a marvelous, miraculous thing. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> where, I want to talk about where our bodies get held. Proverbs 4, 2022. My soul attended to my words. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from my eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them. And this is the key verse, listen to these words and health to all their flesh. What is health to all the flesh? The words of God. Mm -hmm. Incline your ears to them, put them into your hearts, because they give you life. And health to all your flesh. This is what the Word of God says. Shouldn't we not be doing it? Amen? Hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. 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 To apply it to your life. Yes. Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. You ask God for healing, he's going to go, I forget it. I don't feel like healing you. Keep your sickness. Huh. Lord, heal me. Okay. Be healed. Amen? Amen. What do you want from me? Lord, I want to see you arise. Go down to the pool of Siloam and wash your eyes. But in the meantime, I'm going to make it hard for you. Put some dirt on his hands, spits at it, and puts it on his eyes. So he can't see a thing. What do you want from the Lord? Healing? Healing of the spirit? Healing of past hurts? Healing of the body? Healing of unforgiveness? Healing of regrets? Healing of harbor bitterness? God can heal you. All you have to do is believe. As that man that got up, he walked to the pool, washed his eyes, and he was healed. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. That's what we got to do. Believe the Lord. So we can take the blinders off. Because unbelief are blinders. They'll blind you to the power of the miraculous hand of God and the healing power of God. They'll put blinders on you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalms 34, 19. <laughs> Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all of them. We're going to go through a lot of things, but don't worry. God will deliver it. Yeah. All of them. Amen. But the Lord will deliver him from a few of them. No, all of them. Hallelujah. That's what Christ did for our healing. I'm going to read Isaiah 53, 5. This is what the Lord has done for you. So for you to obtain your healing. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Beaten to a bloody pulp. That whip they used pulled out his flesh. One historian says that he was beaten so bad he looked like raw hamburger. Mm -hmm. He did that for you. For your healing. Mm -hmm. So that you may have life. Life in Christ. A great God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Isaiah, our Psalm 147 too. The Lord does build up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. I might have given you the wrong one. I think it's that one. Oh, he healed the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He heals the broken in heart. You hear this morning? Is your heart broken? You have hurts, pain. present, from the past, and you still carry them with you? My question for you is why? Why do you carry them when Christ can deliver you from them and heal you? It's a good question. What is your answer? Sometimes the answer is you don't want to let go of them. You want to hang on to them. Maybe because you need some ammunition later on. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But why not let God deliver you from us? So you can be free in Christ and live in liberty in the Holy Ghost. That's a much better way to live than to be bound up with all those things. Because the Word of God says He wants to heal all your hurts. Amen. Who is he? Why does he do it? Exodus 15, 26. He said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. And this is who he is. For I am the Lord that he was. He's the Lord, Jesus Christ, the one who made you, created you, the one who loves you, the one who ministers to you constantly, all the time, the one who wants to see you in heaven with Him, so He can enjoy you, because that's why He created you. That's why He called you to Himself, so He can enjoy you in heaven. Amen. He is the one who wants to heal you. Amen. So what's our part in healing? Do you have to do anything? Mm -hmm. Believe. Quit listening to the lies of religious churches, the false doctrine, demons of doctrine, people that are demons who preach false doctrine, who believe there is no healing anymore, and that, that was for the book of Acts, not for today. Well, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Because I see many people <coughs> I can feel many times. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
And that's a hindrance in your faith if you believe those things. A total hindrance. Amen. Second Chronicles 7 14. My people which are called by not my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I from, will hear from heaven. He's listening. And will forgive their sin and will heal their land. What is your part? Pray. Seek God. Turn from your wicked ways. If there's any sin that you're doing or anything you know that you're doing that's wrong in the eyes of God, quit doing it. Turn from it. Because that will keep you sick. That will keep you sick. Your mind your heart, your life, sin will destroy you. Mm -hmm. It will. That's what it says here. You have to turn from your wicked ways. But now I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And another false doctrine that the churches talk about, that once you're saved, you don't sin no more. And the Bible says, all of us are sinners. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We all fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. None are righteous, no, not one. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why we have repentance. God, forgive me my sins. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so sorry I did that. Mm -hmm. That's why I have altars. Do you think Joshua built 33 altars just to build them? No, he built them for the army. Because they went in, took the lands, and they built them for the victory, and then to get their lives right with God. Altars were made and designed to bring people closer to God. <laughs> so when you are sinning, you need to build an altar. Get before God. Say, God, I don't want to do this anymore. Help me. Deliver me. Take this out of my life. And then you wonder why things go wrong in life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Because of what you do, what you believe in, how you're doing it. If you listen to false preachers, quit doing it. Because that's a sin. You're listening to the preaching of unbelief. That's what you're listening to. And that's a sin. God wants to purify it. Don't we sing that song? Purify me, Lord. Amen. Because God's into the healing business. Yes. And God for that. Amen. Not only our hearts, but our spirits also. Yes. And our lives. Amen. So no matter what you are faced with, you can turn to God because He is willing, He is able, and He is ready to help you. At any time. Amen. Amen. So that's all I have for you this morning. The healing power of God. It's there for you. All you gotta do is grab a hold of it and allow him to help you. That's your part. It's to believe, grab a hold of it, and let him help you. Amen. Because God won't impose himself upon you. It's too much of a gentleman. You have to go to him. Say, Lord, help. I need help. Amen. Amen.